So hello guys, welcome back to the channel and we are back in England. Now, um, a couple of weeks ago in the Lake District, I photographed some waterfall, did some waterfall photography and it was mint and really, really enjoyed it. And I got, let's say, a little bit of a zest for waterfall photography. I thought, you know, I'd, I'd like to go out hunting for a few um, to photograph. Now, if you've been following my channel, my last couple of videos have been from North Wales and the Clen Peninsula which has been absolute quality. However, for me, that location was all about coastal photography. But now I'm back in England. Um, I'm trying to pick up where I left off from that Halls Water area and do a bit of waterfall photography. So you find me here today in the wonderful county of Shropshire, where I've done many um, videos, but I've never done any waterfall photography here. Now, I found this absolute roaring, raging waterfall here um, by looking on my OS maps and I uh, found there was a little bit of a faint path that led up to it. Um, however, let's be honest, it's a little bit of a trickle, isn't it? Um, I think there probably just hasn't been a lot of rainfall in this area for a while. Hence the, uh, yeah, I don't even know if it, it deserves to be called a waterfall. However, with all of that being said, um, I don't want to be negative. I've got a little bit of an idea of a photograph to take. I think it's going to be fairly tricky. I'm not. 100% sure how to execute it but I'm going to start by getting set up um, I'm going to start by figuring out what composition I'm going to take and then I'll talk you through the rest of it tell you what guys I am so glad that I persevered with this little trickle um, <laughs> instead of just standing here taking the mick out of it because fingers crossed I'm gonna get a decent little composition out of this and, and ultimately a really nice little photograph um, now before I get into anything there's two things that I need to say here that are really important firstly I've got no sky in this photograph at all I think as a bit of a, a general not a rule but a bit of general guidance or advice for myself if you're ever shooting waterfalls it's probably not a good idea to have the sky in because it can be a little bit of a distraction it, it can actually compete with the waterfall in the frame as well um, so not always you know it's a rule that can be broken but personally I don't like to have the sky in now secondly this is incredible um, I've got on the front of my lens my Nissi circular polarizer and I have never never seen such a positive usage of a polarizing filter in my life so i'm gonna to have to put a little video up on the screen here so if you look at this here now all right that as you're seeing it there keep your eyes on those reflections at the bottom third uh, or throughout the bottom third of this uh, little video clip here so as you see it now tons of reflections the polarizer is basically disabled now as i turn this now and enable the circular polarizer Look at that, see you later reflections. That is absolutely amazing. And um, I don't, well, I definitely wouldn't be able to get this photograph really without um, having the circular polarizer on the front here. That is absolutely class. Um, so that's a wonderful example really of how, I suppose priceless your, your polarizer can be, especially if you're always shooting sort of bodies of water like this or whatever. Um, now let's get into this composition. Um, what is making this photograph is we've got these like sort of bubbles or small bits of white foam <laughs> I don't really know what to call them but they're coming down um, from where the waterfall is hitting the plunge pool if you can even call it that um, but they're moving around in this sort of anti-clockwise um, direction which is mint so with a little bit of long exposure I've done a little bit of trial and error with my shutter speeds I'm actually capturing the movement of those bubbles and what we're getting are these kind of circles in the bottom um, half of this composition as it is in this instance and it looks absolutely class so I'm shooting at ISO 100 f11 and like I said with a little bit of trial and error with my shutter speeds it turns out about a two second exposure is optimum that is perfect to capture the movement 
um, in these little bubbles down here so we get these kind of circle effects down um, at the bottom and I've seen photographs like this before but I've just never um, been at a waterfall or a, a, a body of water where this is happening so I'm, I'm well excited to see how this turns out um, yeah I, I, this just feels mint because like I say I found this little waterfall on my OS maps I've come here now and it looks like fingers crossed at least I'm going to get a decent photograph out of it um, I did try with the 6 stop ND on as well like a 20 second exposure but that was way too long it was actually just making the bubbles disappear and we were just capturing like the rock pool as if they weren't even in existence um, but yeah the top half of the composition is basically just the waterfall if you can even call it that absolute Niagara Falls up there at the back bottom half is all them spirals so I'm excited for you to see this one um, I've got my 16 to 35 lens on I focused about one third into the image on this little kind of rock down here and shooting at f11 that's a fairly shallow depth of field we should get a nice even focus throughout the image Tell you what, like I was just saying down there, it feels mint that I uh, just found that location and uh, on my OS maps, and well, fingers crossed anyway, managed to get a decent image out of it. Either way, it just it felt mint, you know, photographing something a little bit different, um, some other than the big vistas. That's really intimate for me. <laughs> That's like proper intimate landscape photography. It's like macro to me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, exciting. Now. I last time I was in Shropshire I got an uh, incredible sunset up on one of the hills so my plan now is to if you can see here kind of just whoa, surrounded by all these beautiful hills so I'm basically just gonna hike up to one of them and uh, see if we get a nice sunset again obviously I can't guarantee it to myself it's very very weather dependent but uh, the sky's looking really nice at the minute Let's head up. So of all the countries that I have lived in and traveled and most importantly, you know, hiked in, uh, that right there was the single most difficult ascent of any hill or mountain I have ever done in my life. And for one reason and one reason only, because I was late for the sunset and I wasn't where I wanted to be with my camera. I'm sure each and every one of you that are into your landscape photography have been there. Running up a hill, absolutely shattered, honestly exhausted, thinking I, I can't, I can't physically go any faster. But then you just look up at the sky and it's kicking off and you just get this like surge of energy in your legs. And it's a cycle of like, you, you might do like 30 seconds and like, I can do it, I can do it, I can get to the top of this hill. And then you just stop, I, I can't. I can't go anymore. I've just had one of them guys and I, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed with myself, I must admit. Um, 
it's been a bit of a downer. And like I say, I'm sure you've all been there. Now, anyway, I've got to the top of this hill and I'm going to take a photograph here and I'll be honest with you, I think it's going to be pretty naff. <laughs> However, I need, for myself, I need to have something to show for that hellish ascent up that hill there. And that's what this photograph is going to do for me. All right. So please don't be expecting fireworks here. I've stuck the Takina 11 to 16 and I'm shooting at 11 mil. I'm doing it. I'm shooting as wide as I possibly can. All right. Um, to be fair, I've been pretty lucky. Upon getting to the top of this hill, uh, I've been greeted by a lot of heather, which I didn't expect. It's quite early on. Um, I think we had a really hot spring here in the UK, so perhaps that's why. Um, oh, it's probably global warming, isn't it? Let's face it. But on top of that, um, just got a sheet there barring away, um, just to add to my woes. <laughs> um, on top of that, um, the, the, the colour in the sky stuck around. I've been really lucky. It stuck around for about half an hour after sunset, which is amazing. Um, so I'm basically in the sky, just capturing the last bits of, the, of that colour. And I've got all this heather um, in the bottom half of my composition, let's say. Um, F9, ISO 100 and a four second exposure. That shows you how dark it is. Um, it's pleasant, you know. Uh, I've got this, this nice big bunch of heather down in my foreground. It's going to be all right, but it's going to serve as a memory for that time that I nearly died running up a hill in Shropshire. Um, probably over exaggerating a little bit there, but you know what I mean. Little bit of a downer. I hope that waterfall image is a bit of a saving grace for this adventure. Um, but it's been nice. It's been nice to be out. Just, I'll tell myself that, you know. Look, I'm going home. I'm going home, right? Because I need to get back to my car. Um, and I am absolutely shattered and I'm mad for a cup of tea. So I'll show you this photograph now. And of course, thank you all so much for watching me. If you're still watching this, thank you for supporting me on these ridiculous landscape photography adventures. This is another one, another one of these videos that just proves and shows the reality really of landscape photography. I hope a lot of users, tell me in the comments below, have you ever been in a ridiculous situation like this where you're kind of looking around thinking, you know, you're looking at the time, half nine at night, no one around. You're just thinking, what am I doing here? Why do I do this? Why? You're looking around. Oh man, babbling on. We all know why we do it. For them moments where it all kicks off and you're in the right place at the right time. I hope you like this image. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs> Out. Thank you.